Lesson 26 A Glance at the Miracle of the Quran What do the letters stand for at the beginning of some of the surahs? We see that the beginning words of many of the surahs of the Holy Quran are letters like Alif Lam Mim, Alif Lam Mim Ra, and Yasin. One of the secrets in the philosophy behind these letters, according to some of the Islamic traditions, is that God is showing the great miraculous and eternal quality of the Holy Quran. That is, how can the Quran make use of these simple letters and create such words, which are greater than the letters, while every child can repeat them, and in truth, the appearance of this important fact is one of the most important miraculous issues. Now, this question arises, from what point of view is the Quran a miracle? Is it only because of its simplicity and tone, or, in other words, the sweetness and clarity of its expression and the extraordinary influence of it, or is it because of something else? The truth is that whenever we look at the Holy Quran from different points of view, each one presents another image of its miracle. For instance, one, eloquence, the sweetness and extraordinary attraction of the miraculous words and concepts. 2. The expression of the highest content from every point of view, especially beliefs which lack any sort of superstition. 3. Scientific miracle. This is the uncovering of issues which human beings during that age had not come to know. 4. The foresee and speak directly and accurately about some future events, the hidden news of the Quran. 5. The lack of contradiction, disputes, disorderliness, and others. A discussion about each of these five areas is very extensive, but we will discuss some of them here. Number 1. Eloquence. We know that every discussion has two aspects, letter and content. Whatever letter and words of beauty contain the necessary unity, and are free of complicated and complex expression, and also the sentence structure is such that they are exactly what one desires to hear and they attract the heart, that expression is called eloquence. The Quran has both of these qualities to the highest extent possible, so that to date no one has been able to bring verses and sores with such attraction, sweetness and tone. In the previous lessons, we saw that Walid ibn Mughayra, a skilled Arab linguist, was enraptured by hearing a verse of the Holy Quran, and was made to think about how to express something to the Quraysh which would lessen the Holy Prophet in the eyes of the people. Finally, thought of the word bewitchment, and called Muhammad, peace be upon him, b. This is what they call the Prophet of Islam, even though they wanted in this way to condemn him, but in truth they were unable to do so. At the time, this calling the Prophet a magician is to admit to the extraordinary effects of the Qur'an and the sense that it cannot be explained and justified in simple terms, and it must be recognized as being something miraculous. But instead of them accepting the truth and considering it to be a miracle and gaining faith, they took the way of myth and legend. They were led astray and said that it was magic. In the history of Islam, it can very often be seen that whenever harsh individuals went to see the Prophet or hear verses of the Holy Quran, they changed their direction in life and allowed the light of the Holy Quran to guide them. This well shows that the attractions and eloquence of the Quran are miraculous. We do not need to go far to see that whenever those people who are familiar with the Arabic language read the Quran and they repeat it. They receive pleasure, they do not tire or become satiated. The words of the Holy Quran are very accurate, are mixed with the purity of expression, and at the same time are clear and enlightening as well as when necessary their form. It is necessary to point out that the Arabic language at that time had progressed a great deal as a language, an example of poetry during the age of ignorance, before the appearance of Islam are among the best poems from the poet of view of language. It was famous that every ear 
the greatest literary men of the Hejaz would gather together and would offer the best examples of their poems in a commercial literary center in the Yuka's Bazaar. One poem would be chosen as the best of the year. They would write it down and recite it in the Kaaba. At the time of the Prophet, seven of these still existed and were called Mu'alakat Sab. But after the descent of the Holy Quran, they paled in comparison to the eloquence of the Holy Quran, so that one after another they were removed from there and were forgotten in history. The commentators upon the various verses of the Quran express all of the wondrous qualities of the verses so that reference can be made to them to gain the familiarity with it. A familiarity with the Holy Quran shows that this saying of the Prophet of Islam is not an exaggeration. The Holy Quran has beautiful exterior and a deep and subtle interior. The wonders of the Quran can never be counted and the miraculous qualities of the Quran will never age. The commander of the faithful, Ali, peace and blessings be upon him. A great student of the Holy Quran also says in the Nahj al The spring of hearts is in the Quran and it is the source of the springs of knowledge. There is no better way to remove the rust of the hearts and souls of people than through the Holy Quran. Think and answer. Number one. What is the philosophy behind the beginning letters of some of the verses of the Holy Quran? Number two. Is the Holy Quran a miracle from only one point of view or from several points of view? Number three. Why did the opponents of the Holy Quran refer to the Prophet of Islam as a bewitcher? Number four. What is the difference between eloquence and bewitching? Number five. What age did the Mu'alakad Sub refer to and what does it mean? Lesson 27 The World View of the Holy Quran Before anything else, we should study the intellectual and cultural environment from which the Holy Quran arose. From the point of view of all historians, the Hijaz was amongst the most underdeveloped and backward areas of the world at that time. During the age of ignorance, the people of this area are referred to as savage or half-savage. From the point of view of ideology, they were very firm worshippers of idols and stone and wood statues had cast their disgraceful shadows upon all of their culture. They even say that they made statues and idols out of dates and they would kneel before them but at times of famine, they would eat them. They held great hatred for female children, so that they buried them alive and called, and they called the angels the daughters of God. They thought that God was just like a human being. They were very surprised by the idea that a person should only worship one God. When the Holy Prophet invited them to worship the one God with great surprise, they said, has he made the gods all into one god? Truly, this is a wondrous thing. Quran Whoever spoke against their superstitions and their myths were called liars and insane. They were ruled by a very firm tribal system and the differences and disputes among the tribes were so extensive that the wars among them never ended and time and time again they colored each other's environment with blood creating blood bats. They were proud of their plunder and considered it to be part of their daily activity. The number of people who could read and write in the area of Mecca, the center of commerce, could be counted on one hand and it was very rare to find scholars among them. Yes, in such environment, an individual who could not read and write and who had never had a teacher arose and brought a book which was so full of such content and meaning that after 14 centuries the scholars are still busy with this interpretation. Every age discovers new truths in it. The image that the Holy Quran gives to the world of existence is a very accurate and exact one. Monotheism is presented in the most perfect form. 
it expresses the secrets of the creation of the earth, the heavens, the night and the day, the sun and the moon, plants and the existence of the human being, each one sign of the one God in the various verses and with a varied form of expression. Sometimes it goes into the depths of the human being and speaks about the unity of the primordial nature. Now, if they embark on a boat, they call on God, making their devotion sincerely and exclusively to Him. But when He has delivered them safety to dry land, behold, they give a share of their worship to others. Sometimes it speaks of the intellect. Sometimes it reasons from the unity of the intellect and relies upon the journey through the horizons and souls. The secrets of the creation of the earth and the heavens, animals and mountains and seas, rain and breezes, and of the body and spirit of the human being. When speaking about the qualities of God, the most interesting and the deepest form of expression is selected. The holy book says, There is nothing whatever like unto him. He is God, there is no God save He, the knower of the unseen and seen. He is the beneficent, the most merciful. He is God, there is no God save He, the King, the Holy, the Peace-loving, the Bestower of Conviction, the Guardian over all, the Ever-Prevalent, the Supreme, the Great Absolute. Hallowed is God from what they associate with Him. He is God, the Creator, the Maker, the Fashioner. His are the excellent names, praises Him whatsoever is in the heavens and the earth. And He is the ever-prevalent, the all-wise. In expressing the knowledge of God and explaining His unlimitedness. And if all the trees on earth were pens and the ocean were ink, with seven oceans behind it to add to its supply, Yet would not the words of God be exhausted. To God belongs the face of east and the west. Whichever way you turn, there is the face of God. When words are spoken about the resurrection and it denies the polytheists, he says, Who can give life to dry bones and decomposed ones at that? Say, he will give them life who created them for the first time. For he is well worst in every kind of creation. The same who produces for you fire out of the green tree, when behold, you kindle therewith your own fires. Is not he who created the heavens and earth able to create the like thereof? Yes, indeed, for he is the creator, supreme of skill and knowledge. Verily, when he intends a thing, his command is be, and it is. On that day will the earth declare her tidings. That day shall we set a seal on their mouths, but their hands will speak to us, and their feet bear witness to all that they did. They will say to their skins, Why bear you witness against us? They will say, God has given a speech. He who gives speech to everything. He created you for the first time, and unto him were you to return. The value of the knowledge of the Holy Quran speaks of the greatness of its content, and the greatness of its content, and the fact that this knowledge is free from any kind of superstition will become clear when it is compared with the altered Bible and Pentatosh. When we compare these two with each other. For instance, we see that the Pentateuch says about the creation of the human being and then what the Holy Quran says. What does the Pentateuch say about the prophets and what does the Holy Quran say? How does the Bible and the Pentateuch describe God? How does the Quran do so? Here, the difference between these two will be made clear. Think and answer. One. What were the particularities of the environment from which the Qur'an arose? Number two. 
What effect did idol worship have in their thoughts? Number three, what is the difference between primordial nature and reason? Number four, what is the logic used by the Quran in describing the qualities of the Creator? Give examples. Number five, how can one better understand the content of the Holy Quran? Lesson 28 The Holy Quran and the Modern Scientific Discoveries There is no doubt that the Holy Quran is not a book about natural sciences, medicine, psychology, or mathematical studies. The Holy Quran is a book of guidance and one which builds a human being. It mentions whatever is necessary for one to know. We should not expect that the Holy Quran be an encyclopedia about the various sciences. We should seek the light of faith and guidance, piety and purity, humaneness and ethics, order and law from the Holy Quran, and it contains all of these. But sometimes, in order to reach this goal, the Holy Quran indicates some of the natural sciences and the secrets of creation in particular and its lessons on unity. It removes the veil over the secrets of the world of creation and it discloses facts which were unknown to the scholars of that era. This expression of the Holy Quran forms a complex which we call the intellectual miracles of the Quran. Here we will indicate some of the intellectual miracles of the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran and the Law of Attraction Before Newton, no one had discovered the law of gravity in a complete way. It is famous that while Newton was sitting under a tree and an apple fell from the tree, he began to think about the reason and said to himself, what energy is this which attracts the apple to itself? Why did it not go up to heaven? After many years of study, he discovered the law of gravity and the discovery of this law it was proven where the order of the stars comes from, why this earth moves around the sun and why they do not fall into each other. He began to think about the reason and said to himself, What energy is this which attracts the apple to itself? Why did it not go up to heaven? After many years of study, he discovered the law of gravity. In the discovery of this law, it was proven where the order of the stars come from, why this earth moves around the sun, and why they do not fall into each other. What power is this which keeps them in their own orbit, and they do not move this way or that? Yes, Newton discovered that the orbiting of a body causes it to flee from the center, and the law of gravity causes it to return to the center. And as long as these two are in balance, that is, the distance between these two bodies brings about a gravity to create a fling from the center and a gravity to pull it back to the center. This attraction and repulsion permits it to remain continuously in its orbit. But the Holy Quran, 1000 years before this event, says, God is He who raised the heavens without any pillars that you can see, is firmly established on the throne. He has subjected the sun and the moon to his law. Each one runs its course for a term appointed. He regulates all affairs, explaining the sign in detail that you may believe with certainty in the meeting with your Lord. In a tradition from Imam Ali ibn Musa al-Ridha, about this verse, he says, Does God not say a pillar without a pillar being seen? The narration says, That in response to the Imam, I said, Yes. He said, Thus a pillar exists, but you do not see it. Can an analogy simpler than this be found to express this to simple Arab people? In the tradition of Hadrat Ali, we read, These stars which are in the heavens, are cities like cities on earth, and every city is connected to another city, be a ray of light. 
Scholars today among the astronomers believe that there are millions of stars which are inhabited with living creatures, but the detail of this are still not known. The discovery of the orbit of the Earth around the Sun. It is famous that the first person who discovered that the Earth moves around the Sun was Galileo, who lived approximately four centuries before and before that, the Egyptian scholar. Ptolemy had said, the Earth is the center of the universe, and everything revolves around it. Galileo was reprimanded by the Catholic Church for his discovery, and his denial of this discovery saved his life, but finally other scholars followed up his discovery, and today it is certain scientific fact that has been proved by space flights. In summary, the Earth being the center was negated and it became clear that this was an error of our senses because we mistake the movement of the stars and planets for the movement of the earth. We are in motion and we assume that they are. At any rate, the opinion of Ptolemy lasted for 1,500 years and it influenced the thoughts of the scholars during those years and at the time of the descent of the Holy Quran no one had the courage to speak against this view. But when we turn to the Holy Quran, we see, you see the mountains and think them firmly fixed, but they shall pass away as the clouds pass away. The Quran speaks very clearly about the movement of the mountains, whereas we see them as immovable, and the analogy of their movement with that of cloud is both indication of calmness and quietude. If we see that instead of the movement of the earth, the movement of the mountains is mentioned, this is so that the truth of the matter be made known, because it is clear that the mountains without the earth have no motion, and the movement of them is exactly like the movement of the earth, either around itself or around the sun or both. Now think that at a time when all of the scholars of the world and the masses of the people thought that the earth was motionless and believed that all of the stars and planets moved around it, the direct confrontation of this idea and the mention of the movement of the earth is a scientific miracle. And this from a person who had never studied and who in general arose from an area where there were no teachers and which was considered to be very backward from the point of view of science and culture. Is this not a proof of the truth of this book? Think and answer. Number one, what is meant by scientific miracles of the Quran? Number two, who was the first person who discovered the law of gravity and in what age did he live? Number three, in what words in the Quran and with what analogy does it refer to the law of gravity in general terms? Number four. Who said that the earth was immobile and how long did this rule human thought? In what words and surah does the Holy Quran refer to the movement of the earth? Lesson 29. Another proof of the rightfulness of the Prophet of Islam. In order to understand the truth of the invitation of the claimant to prophethood and his truthfulness or falsity, we have other ways in addition to the question of his miracles, and this can be another living proof of the way to reach the truth, which is to study the following. Number one, the moral personality and social background. Number two, the conditions which ruled in the area of the invitation. Number three, the conditions of the time. Number four, the content of the invitation. Number five, the programs and means and principles and goal. Number six, an evaluation of the effects of the invitation upon the area or environment. Number seven, an evaluation of the faith and self-sacrifices of the invitee in relation to the goal. Number eight, the non-compromise with deviated suggestions. Number nine, the speed of the effects in public opinion. Number 10, a study of the faithful 
and understanding what group they came from. If we, in truth, study these ten subjects in relation to every claimant, and if we make a file about them, we can very easily understand the truth. Noting that has been said above, we present a very brief study of the above issues in relation to the person of the Holy Prophet, even though each one of these items requires a separate study of its own. Number 1. That which is among the particularities of the morality of the Prophet of Islam in the midst of his social activities, according to the histories written by his friends and enemies, is clear to us that he was so pure and correct that even in the age of ignorance he was given the title of trustworthy. History says, when he wanted to migrate to Medina, he assigned Ali, peace and blessings be upon him, the task of giving back the trusts which people had placed with him. His courage, perseverance, and good conduct, his quickness and his manliness, his forgiveness in war and peace can be seen, in particular his command of forgiveness for the people of Mecca after the victory over his city. And the surrender of the bloodthirsty enemies of Islam is clear, and is clear evidence of his character. Number 2. We all know that normal average individuals, even geniuses, take on the color of their environment, whether they want to or not, of course, to a lesser or greater degree. Now let us think that a person who lived for 40 years in the midst of ignorance, idol worship, in an environment which was formed by the weave of the culture of the people with polytheism and superstition, how is it possible that the people arise to establish pure monotheism and struggle against all forms of polytheism? How is it possible that scientific analysis develop in an environment of ignorance? Can one believe that without divine intervention such a wondrous phenomenon would occur? Number 3. It must be seen in the manifestation of a prophet took place in every age and era. When the world was going through the Middle Ages, the age of despotism, discrimination, oppressive racial and class superiority, perhaps we should read the words of Hadrat Ali, who bore witness to the age before and after the appearance of Islam. He says, God sent the Holy Prophet during a time when the people of the world were lost and led astray. Their intellects were at the disposal of their whims and lusts, their sense of honor were destroyed, the oppression of ignorance had led them astray, and in the midst of ignorance and anxiety they were lost. The Nahj al Sermon 91 Now think about the precepts, which is the slogans of equality of human beings. The elimination of racial discrimination and class distinction had in relation to the situation of that time. Surely, the believers are brothers. Number 4. The content of his invitation brought unity in all areas. The elimination of oppressive privileges, the unity of humanity, a struggle with oppression, a plan for the rule of the world, defense of the deprived, and the acceptance of piety and trustworthiness as the best criteria for human values. Number 5. In the area of plans to be implemented, permission was never given to make use of the concept that the goal is a means to justify the end in order to attain the sacred goals, but rather sought out sacred means. He directly would say, And let not hatred of a people incite you not to act equitably. His commands to keep to moral principles, even in the midst of war, not to attack civilians, not cutting down the forests and date palms, not polluting the drinking water, good treatment of the prisoners of war are clear signs of this truth. Number 6. The effects of this invitation upon the environment were so great that the enemies were, were even afraid of people going near the Prophet because they saw that his attraction and influence was extraordinary. Sometimes they raised such a commotion when he spoke that the people could not hear what he was saying to prevent his words from entering their thirsty hearts. Because of this 
and to cover over the truth of what he was saying, they called him bewitched, and his words bewitchment. This in itself was an admit admittance of the strange effects of the invitation of the Holy Prophet. Number 7. An evaluation of his self-sacrifice upon the way of his invitation shows that he, more than any other person, was a believer and unfaithful to the precepts which he brought. He stood in some of the battlefields where those who had recently accepted Islam fled. He paid no attention to the enemy, who often threatened him in every way possible. He retained his beliefs and never showed weakness or doubt. Number 8. Several times they tried to kill him on the excuse that he compromised with the deviant, but he never surrendered. He would say, if you give me the sun in one hand and the moon in another, and all of the planets and stars be under my dominion, I will never give up my goal and surrender. Number 9. Not only was the effect of his invitation in public opinion wondrous, the speed by which it happened was also extraordinary. Those who have studied the books of Western experts on the Middle East and on Islam are all amazed by the speed of the spread of Islam. For example, three of the most famous ones of the West who wrote The History of Arab Civilization and its Basis in the East have said that this must be admitted, they say, with all of the efforts for the understanding of the speedy progress of Islam in the world, the fact that in less than a century it was able to spread to most parts of the known world is still a great puzzle. Yes, it is a puzzle that Islam was able to penetrate into the hearts of millions of people with such speed to absorb civilizations and bring about new civilizations. Number 10. Finally, we reach the point that the enemies were a group of unbeliever leaders, oppressors and wealthy who only sought their own self-interests, whereas those who found faith were most often the pure-hearted youth from among the large group of the abased who longed for the truth and were even slaves, individuals who other than pure hearts had no capital and who were thirsty for the truth from the totality of this study, which is a very extensive one, we can well conclude that this was a divine invitation, an invitation which flowed from something beyond nature, from the great creator, for the salvation of the human being from corruption and ignorance, polytheism, oppression and injustice. Think and answer. Number one. Is there any way to come to recognize the truth of a prophet other than through his miracles? What are they? Number two. What is meant by the gathering of laws and what issues must be considered? Number three. Can anything be understood from a comparison of the Arabs before and after Islam? Number four. Express a part of that which existed in the age of ignorance among the Arabs in particular and of the world in general. Number 5. Why did the enemies of Islam condemn the Prophet by calling what he said bewitchment? Lesson 30. The Prophet of Islam is the seal of prophecy. A clear meaning of seal. The Prophet of Islam is the last Prophet of God and the hierarchy of prophethood ends with him. This is one of the necessary precepts of Islam. What is meant by necessary is that whoever joins the ranks of the Muslims must understand that all Muslims believe this and this and that this is among their decisive beliefs. That is, just as those who have dealings with Muslims know that they emphasize the principle of unity, they must also know that the seal of the prophethood by the Prophet of Islam is also agreed to by all and there is no group of Muslims who are in anticipation of the coming of another prophet. In truth, the movement of humanity upon its way towards perfection has passed through various states with sending of the prophets, and they have attained a level upon this way so that they can stand on their own two feet. This is, by replying upon the universal teachings of Islam, 
they can solve their problems. In other words, Islam is the final law and it is the age of maturity of humanity. From the point of view of belief, it is the most perfect of contents of religious thought. And from the point of view of practice, it has so been formulated that it is coordinated with every age and every generation. The reason for the seal of the prophecy. In order to prove this, we have many reasons, the most clear of which are three. Number one, the necessity of this issue. We have pointed out that whoever deals with Muslims, wherever in this world they may be, may come to know that they believe in the seal of prophethood with the prophet of Islam and that if a person accepts Islam with sufficient reasons, they have no choice but to accept the ending of prophethood with him. And as in the previous lessons we have given sufficient proofs of this, we must also accept this idea which is one of the necessities of this religion. Number two, verses of the Holy Quran are also clear proof of the end of prophethood with the Prophet of Islam. Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not the father of any of your men, but he is the apostle of God and the seal of prophets, and God has full knowledge of all things. This verse was revealed when the idea of foster children was prevalent among the Arabs. They would accept a child who had a different mother and father as their adopted child, and they accepted the child into their home as if it was their own child. The child was mahram and would inherit, etc. But Islam came and did away with the ignorant custom saying foster children are not covered by the divine law like the real children. Among them was Zaid, the foster child of the Prophet of Islam, was considered to be a child of Prophet. Thus, the Holy Quran says that you should only describe the real qualities of the Prophet, which are two, divine mission and seal of prophethood, instead of introducing them as the father of one of these individuals. This shows that the seal of prophethood by the Prophet of Islam was clear for all permanent and decisive as was his mission. What exactly is meant by seal? Seal means to end something. For instance, a seal is placed at the end of a letter. And if we see that sometimes a ring is called a seal, it is because in that age it was used in place of the signature of a name. Whoever at the end of this letter sealed it with the ring in which the name was carved, used it as a seal, and every image on the ring was particular to that person. In the Islamic traditions we read, when the Holy Prophet wanted to write a letter for the kings and leaders of these times and invited them to Islam, his servant told him that the kings would not accept a letter unless it had a seal. The letters of the Holy Prophet to that time did not have a seal. He ordered that a ring be made for him in which was imprinted. There is no God but God and Muhammad is the Prophet of God. The Prophet after this ordered that his letter be sealed with that from then on. Thus, the meaning of seal is clear. Number one, we have many traditions which prove the seal of prophethood, of prophet of Islam among which are. Among the traditions recorded by Jabr ibn Abdullah Ansari, he records the prophet as saying, Among the religions, Islam is like a house which has been built and completed and made beautiful, and only one mud brick remains. Whoever enters through there or looks through that says, How beautiful, but this has an empty place. I am that last mud brick, and all prophets end with me. Tafsir Majma al Bayan. Imam Sadiq says, The permissible of Muhammad is permissible until the day of resurrection, and the forbidden is forbidden until the day of resurrection. Asol al Kafi, Volume 1. In the famous traditions of the Shiites and Sunnites from the Prophet, we read that he said to Ali, peace be upon him, You are like Aaron in relation to Moses, in relation to me, other than the fact that after me there will be no Prophet, and tens of other traditions. As to the seal of the Prophethood of the Prophet of Islam, 
There are some questions which should turn our attention towards. Number one. Some people say that if the sending of the prophets was through divine grace, why should the people of our age be deprived of his grace? Why do you find a new way to guide the people of our age? But they are negligent of one point, and that is that the deprivation in our age is not because they do not merit it, but because humanity's thoughts and awareness have ended and by understanding the precepts of the Holy Prophet of Islam, they can continue them. It is perhaps a good idea to give an example here. The prophets who came and brought a law or a book were five. Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, peace be upon them, and Prophet Muhammad, peace and the mercy of God be upon him and his descendants. They made efforts in a particular area of the history for the guidance and perfection of humanity and this passed beyond a certain stage the second phase of the prophets was handed o'er and has reached a level whereby they have found their final state and the strength to continue the way it is just like the five stages study program which must be followed to be completed if a physician does not go to school and college it does not mean that he does not have the merit. It is because of this that the amount of knowledge which he gains will help him to solve the scientific difficulties he faces. Number two, as human society is continuously changing, how can we, with the permanent laws of Islam, answer the needs of that? In response, we say that Islam has two kinds of laws. One is a series of laws which resemble permanent qualities of particular human beings, like the necessity for the belief in unity, the implementation of the principles of justice, struggle against any kind of oppression. But another part is a series of general principles, which, with other changes, and by the doing away of them, they take on a new form, and they answer the problems of each age. For instance, a universal principle of Islam is respect the agreements that you make and be loyal. It is clear that with the passing of time new social and commercial and political ties will be made whereby a person can answer them by taking the major principle into consideration. We have another principle, La Zarar, which says that any law which will harm an individual or society must be limited. You can see to what extent these universal principles of Islam are effective in solving problems, and we such laws in Islam. Number three, there is no doubt that leadership is a vital part of Islam with the lack of profit and the occultation of his successor. The issue of leadership will be terminated because of the principle of the seal of prophethood by the prophet of Islam. We cannot wait in anticipation for another prophet. Does this not have harmful implications for an Islamic society? In response, we say that for this era, the necessary things have been suggested through Wilayat a Faqih, the leadership of religious jurisprudence who have the necessary conditions of knowledge, piety, and political awareness. The means of recognizing such a leader also has been clearly expressed in Islam. There is thus no need for concern in this area. Thus, Wilayat a Faqih is the end of the line of the prophets, the leadership of a religious jurisprudent, who has all of the necessary conditions so that Islamic society is not left without a guardian. Think and answer. Number one. What is the exact meaning of seal? Number two. How can we use the Holy Quran to understand the meaning of seal? Number three. Why are the people of our age deprived of the divine prophets? Number four. How many kinds of laws are there in Islam and how do they answer our needs today? Number five. Can the Islamic society exist without a leader? How can you solve the issue of leadership in our times?